everyone. Welcome to our online meditation session with Heart Chan Irvine. We are the local chapter of Heart Chan, which is a non-religious spiritual practice with over 2,500 years of lineage. We have a meditation session conducted by various centers. Please do visit our Facebook page for a list of current schedules. We stream live all our sessions and you may find the recordings available under our video playlist on our page. Before we get started, just a few reminders. Please do find a quiet place to attend this session and avoid any distractions. During the session, the teacher will open up the opportunity to ask questions. Please use the chat function to enter your questions and the teacher will answer them during the sessions. You may also uh, enter question on our Facebook page as a comment, whether it is live or a recording, and we will be sure to answer your questions accordingly. Once the meditation starts, meditate as long as you like, feel free to exit at any time. We will not announce the end of the scheduled session, so we do not disrupt your meditation. Lastly, please do not record any session as they are proprietary to heart chant. With that, I would like to turn your attention to our teacher today, uh, instructor Jingming, who will, sh who will uh, surprise us with a topic. <laughs> Thank you for, and uh, enjoy the session. Good morning, everyone. It's a wonderful time to practice. It's a very comfortable morning. The temperature is good, the birds sing and all the neighborhood noises is as always familiar noises, part of our everyday life. And how do we accept it all? How do we be peace with it all? How do we harmonize with it all? That is the purpose of everyday living. And that's what this practice is all about. So let us, uh, sit down and uh, close our eyes and be quiet for a few minutes to uh, reach the peace inside each of us, okay?
Okay, now uh, please, <clears throat> please open your ears. You don't necessarily have to open your eyes. I'm not uh, uh, any different from you to be looked at. So, um, and also all my talking is has only one purpose: is to encourage you to continue to meditate, to uh, to be liberated from sufferings. But all these has to be done by yourself. And all I can do uh, by speaking here is to share some of the witnesses and my journeys and, you know, the, and what I've benefited from uh, hard time practice. And so that you'll be able to uh, believe more in Sifu, believe in this journey, believe in this practice and practice more. So the whole issue is practice more. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I thought I'd share briefly about my 20-year journey today and what I have realized. Um, I myself is a very good student. I always get very good grades, uh, top in the class, and I always think I know everything, and I'm also very clear on the things I don't know. So when I first... Uh, approached uh, by Yan Yan Lao Tzu. I have never read anything about Buddhism or close in contact with Buddhism or Taoism. Uh, I graduated from a Catholic school. I was on the uh, church choir and singing all these kind of uh, hymns and nice Catholic songs. That was about, you know, the the closest I have come to spiritual practice. I know nothing. And uh, also, Yan Yan Lao did not talk about anything. She just started you know, sit down and uh, curl your tongue and sit up straight and breathe. That's how she started. And that, to me, instead of telling me that it is a spiritual practice. It will liberate your life. It will benefit you and all those talks. To me, that is a more direct route into, into this hard time practice. Because if you start to talk about this is a spiritual practice, that is not a spiritual practice. This is a convenient practice. This is an absolute practice that my mind would be aroused and started to analyze and research and read books and get into all kind of mess, right? <laughs> so I was fortunate and just start meditation. Consider it's an exercise, a hobby, a daily routine, um, a simple you know, thing that we can do just to calm ourselves down. And I think I was fortunate, I started that way. And also uh, I learned that after a while I began to feel pulse within myself. That was very shocking to me. That was very shocking to me because I never did know I have all those myelin, all these <laughs> chakras. I never did know that, uh, you know, that there's a channel in my body, even though you know, some of the thoughts, I mean, when I, when I was in high school, I read a lot of Wu uh, Xia so a lot of these Chinese samurai books and talk about chakras and dian <laughs> xue and uh, all these, uh, you know, qi channels and all that stuff. But I never experienced anything myself. So by having these experiences that, you know, I actually can feel, there is a chi in me, there's an energy in me. Then I realized there, is, there must be energy outside. There must be similar pulsation outside. And these two energies should be able to communicate with each other instead of going through the brain. So that was very fortunate. That was, uh, I think was in, uh, in the uh, second or third month, you know, uh, I'd be able to feel, I think with the root chakra was the first thing I felt, not the navel chakra. <laughs> <laughs> mm. 
then I began to believe in this practice. And also in the second month, I began to sleep soundly, uh, like a 20 year old, you know, even though at that time I was 50 and sleep very soundly. In about six months time, my allergy issue started to diminish. And in about a year or two, my IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, you know, the kind of syndrome where if you eat uh, too big a watermelon or if you're going to from a warm house into a snow uh, outside, sudden temperature change uh, or drink too much water or eat too much, you, you, irritable, your bowel started to move very quickly. You need to go to the restroom right away. And I had that for about 20 some years. And because this practice enabled me to calm myself down. Irritable bowel syndrome is really because of internal stress. And calm myself down and also improve my chi flow. Okay. So the first year or two it was strictly physical. And I truly enjoy the physical benefit. And because I can feel it, you know. And because of that, I'd be able to feel later on because of that beginning to, because uh, later on Sufu started to give uh, uh, online lessons and I beginning to believe in Sufu uh, and I'll be able to in sync uh, some of the time, not all the time, <laughs> in sync with Sufu. And uh, so, so therefore, uh, from this experience, I have come to uh, understanding is that until you can feel these phenomena inside your body, whatever hard time talked about, it'd be difficult for you to believe. You know, so I always tell people, you know, share your gan yin, you xiang yin. You have to have a personal witness of your inner strength, inner power, inner energy flow before you'll be able to connect externally. Because just like a radio, you know, if you don't have the right frequency, you won't be able to sync with any station. You need to have a very well tuned, powerful radio. So the, the more powerful chi you have, the bigger the antenna you have, and then you'll be able to in sync with more remote signals. And that's what I learned gradually in, in especially after the third year, um, when my 10 chakras and three energy channels beginning to function very well, I begin to receive all these different uh, messages. And not, not all, but some, some, <laughs> some of these uh, very uh, unique messages and help me to deal with everyday life uh, much more easily. So that is the first phase, that's the physical phase. And two, three weeks ago, which is, you know, 20 years later, <laughs> my, one of my golfing buddies said, uh, he, he is uh, 12 years younger than I am, 13 years younger than I am. He says, I have uh, prostate cancer. I said, oh. And he said, uh, my PSA, which is an indicator of prostate cancer is at five. I said, oh, I said, what is the normal level? He said, well, as low as possible, but if you, if you uh, uh, reach uh, 3.5, then you need to worry about it. If it's under three or four, four five is normal, but it needs to be as low as possible. I said, oh, interesting. I never really paid attention because I always, I never had any problem. I don't have diabetes, uh, high hypertension. I don't have any of those issues. But PSA, hey, interesting. So I went back to my uh, blood uh, 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 report and then, then I look at the last year, the 2019, my PSA is at 1.2, which is way below the 3.5 that we're supposed to worry about. And so, Issues like this, you know, make, make you feel you're very blessed, you know, to, to be on this practice, very blessed. And I remember very well on the eighth year, 
that uh, 208 uh, January, I realized that even the statement, even the concept, even the notion that, oh, I understood it, is really to satisfy our brain. Got nothing to do with our spirituality. So you don't have to understand. <clears throat> Because understanding is really for the brain. You see, it's too bad, you know, the current teaching methods for anything from psychology to law to medicine is that you get all these books and theories and try to understand. A lot of times when we talk about something so abstract, you know, the spiritual practice, <clears throat> it's so hard to describe it. It's so hard for people to understand. But if people don't understand it or they disagree, they read the wrong books, they came from a different perspective, different civilization, different culture, uh, especially different religion, then they say, oh, I don't uh, agree with you. <laughs> then that's the end of uh, the connection. But actually, connection doesn't go by words. The connection is go by heart. So when we meet, you know, um, I have a very good golfing buddy. He is a very uh, de devoted Christian. And um, his uh, uh, father-in-law is the pastor of a, of a church. And we talk about Christianity and Buddhism similarities. And the more we talk about, the more we discover there is a lot of similarity. Yeah. They're practically just different words. The spiritual part is basically the same. Yeah. So what I'm trying to say is there's no need to understand. <laughs> Just build up your chi, build up your power, build up your connection. Then automatically you're going to get all these messages. Whatever theory or witness or testimonials that we, repre we, we present is for you to encourage you to continue on this journey, to let you believe there is a, a light at the tunnel. <laughs> There's a, a light at the end of the tunnel and there is a green pasture beyond the mountain or beyond the, the snow covered, you know, the, the slope. So, if you wanted to ferry somebody, instead of give them all these big ideas, you know, everything Sifu taught in words. Just ask them to curl your tongue and do belly breathing and then uh, focus on to find your navel chakra. Once they find the navel chakra, and especially, you know, uh, I, I love this, uh, this very simple practice is uh, laying face down, put a fist on your belly button and for three minutes, and then they're going to feel a pulse there. So, Whoa, what is that? <laughs> That's a very easy way, a much easier way to tell people there is an energy flow in you and that energy can be connected to the universe. And then instead of talk about theories and ideas and you know training and examples and perspectives, that is the most direct way. Yeah. And then after a while, after that 2008 uh, January realization that uh, understanding is really for the mind, we don't really need to understand. I come to a second realization is that we are a, um, we are a free spirit, you know, just somehow we got injected or embedded or uh, involved or jailed <laughs> into a earthly spirit, an earthly physical body. <laughs> I mean, we were happy flowing in the sky, <laughs> flowing in the universe as a spirit spirit, but somehow we just took on a physical body. And as you know, all physical body is, as Shakyamuni Buddha said, going through birth, 
aging, sickness, and death. It's a cyclic thing, you know? Just like all flowers bloom and become fruits and then die. There's always winter and spring and summer. I mean, everything in the physical domain is cyclic. Everything in the physical domain come and die. Then I realized that um, we're like waves in the ocean, you know? Uh, the next wave is uh, my brother, my next wave on the right hand side, my daughter and my wife, you know? And we are surrounded by these waves, you know, each one. And Whatever happened to them will affect us. My, my daughter is a, a lost job or got a, a, sal a promotion. <laughs> it's gonna affect me, my brothers, you know? And then further away, my colleagues, you know? And, and then my strangers. <laughs> I remember there was one day I was driving to a Los Angeles airport and I pick up my father with my wife, Emily, and then uh, it was like nine, 10 o'clock at night. Uh, and um, we thought we need a cup of coffee because it's kind of getting late. And then both of us didn't have any wallet. <laughs> so we had to look around at the time we arrived at McDonald's, try to get a cup of coffee, so it was 75 cents. Then we found there's some coins in the car and we got a, something like a you know, dollar 25 cents. So we took the dollar 25 cents and then take, take, you know, take it out of the car and walk into the McDonald's and try to get a cup of coffee to share for two of us. And then a homeless showed up and said, can you spare a dime? Oh, I feel so bad. I, I, I feel so bad. I said, I'm sorry. All I got is a dollar for my cup of coffee. <laughs> See, it affects us. I still remember that scene distinctly. I remember I feel so bad that, of course, what I should have done is give him the dollar and forget about coffee, but I didn't do that because <laughs> self. And usually when we either drive around or meet or whenever we meet the homeless, we always give a dollar or two, whatever we can find in the wallet. So they affect us. But if you think about it, not just they affect us, their colleagues and relatives and, you know, my spouses, brothers, and, you know, ankles and aunties affect them. So all the waves is just, <laughs> I don't want to call it a mess, but just affecting each other. But there's a common power effect at us all. That is the undercurrent under the waves, the wind blowing on the top, the weather, you know, like hurricane, tornado. They affect all of us. So what we want to, to do in this life is to see through the hopelessness, the, I, I don't want to use the word stupidity, but uh, it's really a very, it's a disaster that we, we are, you know, like waves in the ocean and being affected by all the waves around us and they're affected by their waves. And there's an undercurrent. So what we wanted to do is live like the ocean and see through the inter influences, see through the cause and effect of this physical phenomenon. Once we can surrender ourselves to whatever happened, once we can accept and deal with it with wisdom, then we liberate from suffering. So in other words, the spiritual practice is really for us to realize, to see the, 
there is a two world. One is the spiritual world. That is free. That is love. That is peace. That is contentment. That is wonderful feeling. Versus a physical world, a phenomenal world. A world is caused by cause and effect. We call it karma. Karma is just cause and effect. That's all. And you know, like there's all these kind of books written about what is karma, what does karma do. As I mentioned earlier, there's no need to go into all the perspectives and definitions and just look at, you know, and I often, you know, use uh, the, the following example. Why am I so mild manners and don't get angry? Because my father is a tyrant. If I have any objection, he'll beat me. <laughs> so I have to survive. So I have to, I have to avoid all the meeting, but I agree with him, everything he said. So being angry, uh, disagree strongly, objecting whatever he's doing only caused me more harm. But why is he like that? It because his grandma spoiled him badly out of six brothers and he has and grandma favored him all the time. He, we call him a wufa wu tian. He is a true spoiled brat. And but then why grandma spoiled him so badly is because grandma is from a very rich family. She is very well educated and very loving and very kind and loves everybody. See, it's cause and cause and causes, you see. <laughs> so as we see through that, then we realize these cause and effect is beyond our control. We just have to accept it and deal with it and forget it and elevate ourselves from the situation <coughs> if we can. So the first stage of benefit is get healthy, liberate ourselves from all the sufferings, which is the physical world. That is the first state. Once we reach that state, we basically live in harmony with the cause and effect world. But we're not one with it though. So what I'm seeking now is to be one with everything. That requires a connection with the universe and the earth in constant place. And that requires a very cleansed, purified body. That requires no compromise, you know. It's not a percentage thing. It is, uh, you know, that's why Sifu said, Guan Chan Ding. In other words, uh, we practice is a slow pace, the gradual practice, but the awakening is sudden. Either you awaken, either you connect 100% or you don't. There's no such thing as a 90% connection. You know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> that's hard that's hard but we'll be happy once we reach the state of distant ourselves from all the phenomena distant from ourselves from the physical world uh, we, 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 we should benefit a lot from that that is the minimum every one of us be able to achieve in this lifetime you know, just practice <laughs> just meditate just abandon all thoughts. Don't analyze. Don't initiate any notion. You know? And then after you reach that state, I mean, it's, it's a wonderful state. It's a hard to describe state. You know, everyday life, like to me, every day is the same now. I have all my relative issues or my living issues are taken care of. My daughters and sons, my parents and my brothers and sisters, everybody is in their proper place. There's no more surprises. And now I'm free like a bird. <laughs> just, 
just requires a, a better connection, a tighter connection, a hundred percent connection to the universe. So anyway, uh, that is uh, that is my journey for the last twenty years. Um, it's a wonderful journey, and it's a wonderful teaching. I'm so grateful, I'm so blessed. So, and I truly believe every one of us be able to do to achieve that, to witness that. If you haven't, just stop looking for it, because the more you're looking for it, the harder it's going to surface because the spirit is usually covered by our mind. So no expectation, just relax. And eventually you will get into a spiritual state, which is all peace and light and love and quiet and fully sensitive. Yeah. Okay, any questions uh, about what I shared? Please raise your hand. Okay, <clears throat> so it's a simple, a simple testimony. <laughs> Everyone be able to uh, experience it. All right, today's uh, meditation. Since uh, we did uh, Own Money Pet Me Home, so I thought uh, I will do that again. And uh, we're going to go Own Money Pay me home again one chakra at a time and then i'm gonna play uh chiming lao's favorite uh music which is on money pay me home okay and uh continue on and try to try to be in sync with that song okay uh, because on money pay me home has well, even though a lot of people, you know, write all this kind of interpretation, but don't worry about that. When you go on, just in sync with your heart chakra, you're going to feel your heart chakra vibrate so strongly, your whole body is vibrating. Om, and then ma is go through the root chakra. Ma, ma. Ni going through the sacral chakra. Pei is kidney chakra. Me is the wisdom chakra. And then home, we go out the ten chakra. So just use this natural, natural uh, sound to vibrate in sync with your chakras. And it's a very powerful uh, composition. And when uh, Chiming Lao Tzu play with that, a lot of people have tears and have visions and have all kind of phenomena. If you do, please share with our WeChat group, okay? All right. Let's sit up straight. And uh, take a few deep breaths. We'll go on, we're going to be heart chakra, okay? Oh. Next one is Ma. 
Ma that is the root chakra. The next one is the sacral chakra. Ni. That is kidney chakra. Pe. Please uh, uh, voice uh, the same, utter the same sound uh, uh, with me uh, because you need to feel that uh, within yourself. The sound gotta come from yourself. Ni ped mi, mi is the wisdom chakra. Mi then hon is the ten chakra. Then the hon actually, the energy flow goes out from the uh, ten chakra to the universe. Hon. Okay, so we'll go start from the beginning again. Oh, my.